good morning, uh, Thursday morning, heading to Or Yehuda today, a city I don't think I've ever been in, to meet Ruben Maislow's, first of all, Ariel Maislow's brother. Ariel sold his company to Apple for a couple hundred million dollars. Ruben is quite an interesting dude. He worked for many years in the innovation department of a large, large corporation, and now he is somewhat of a, I don't know, I'd say an Instagram phenomenon. So we're actually meeting to talk about Instagram. Seriously, he's going to teach me how to up my game. A couple of other meetings, and then tonight we're heading to Herzliya to a new restaurant that should be super interesting. I think it's Australian barbecue. Anyway, Thursday, my favorite day of the week, then weekend. All in all, it's going to be great. Next week, regular week, the week after that, Palo Alto. So here we go. Let's do this. Made it to Or Yehuda. Our meeting was supposed to start at 9, but moved it forward to 8. And my friend Aaron from MyHeritage.com reached out, told me his headquarters is here in Or Yehuda. So we set a spontaneous meeting. MyHeritage is for sure one of the most interesting companies in Israel. So I'm going to get Aaron on camera today as well. I hope. Aaron, you better agree to an interview. Anyway, going to meet Ruben now. Talk Instagram here in Or Yehuda. So I wanted to bring my drone, but Ruben told me no droning here, but check out this view. I'm a little scared of heights, so this is kind of making me a little dizzy, but what's this? Ch check this place. What'd you do here, Ruben? Check. What is this thing? That's my uh, brick oven that I built, Masonic brick oven. Nice. I, I do my own pizzas here and... Uh, Your own pizza? You get pizza. We eat pizza, man. What about some meat? Some lamb. Well, pizza is life. Yeah. I yeah. gotta say that. I have a problem with pizza. Uh, meat is uh, my other life. I'm convinced yeah. that one day someone will discover that there's a um, chemical or some sort of substance in pizza that makes it physically addictive, like nicotine or something. I'm so addicted to pizza. I'm telling you, man, it's a big problem. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna sit down and talk about Instagram because this guy. Tell me about your Instagram a little bit. So I have a food account and Instagram. I got over a hundred thousand followers. It's called Meat Curator, and it's all about food. And if you're not hungry, you go in there, you come out hungry, and then you eat your phone. So it's very simple. What did you do before you were doing this? I was a high tech executive at Intel, working on all the latest technologies. I'm still uh, in high tech. I'm still looking for new things to do and. I love uh, this industry very much. And this is a side project because I'm a foodie. And it, it's taking off though. It's taking off uh, quite substantially. That's awesome. Um, Who's your brother, by the way? Oh, my brother is Ariel. He's uh, also in high tech. Oh, you're a simple guy, right? <laughs> He's my brother. <laughs> I didn't even, by the way, we were friends for years. We were having lunch and you just like mentioned totally casually about his brother. I'm like, Ariel's your brother. Ariel's a rock star in the tech world. Give me just a, two seconds. What's his, what, what, what's his accomplishments, let's just say. So my brother, he founded a few companies. Most of them very successful. Uh, he sold some of them, uh, he raised a lot of capital, and he's currently working on another startup uh, who's doing very well. What's he's working very hard, very, wait, very hard. His current startup is Stratascale, right? Yes. Okay, and that's basically replacing servers, I mean, in the cloud. I mean, it's cloud computing, it's oversimplifying, correct? That is cloud computing, right? Yeah. Okay, and what, is, what, did, what did he do in this previous, right before Stratascale? So he did Anobit, uh, which was a, a flash memory company. Sold uh, it to? He got sold to Apple. For how much, do you remember? I don't know. A lot of money. figures. Google it. Whatever was in the press. And, and he's, a, he's a super smart dude. I mean, I, you introduced us, so we sat, and he's like, his brain is like on another, a whole different level. Which is, well, you know, not, not different level than yours. You guys have good <laughs> genes, but different level than mine. Anyway, let's sit we down We came talk. from the same gene pool, but... Let's, let's talk Instagram, dude. Okay. So, just made it to my heritage. Who are you? Hello, I'm Aaron Godfrey, VP Marketing. You are like a freaking TV star nowadays, man. You were on the morning show last week or something in Britain? Good morning, Britain. Good yeah. morning, Britain. Dude, you gotta sit and I gotta understand, but tell me, let's walk a little. Tell me sure. about this, this company. What's my heritage? So my heritage was started as a family history company to help anybody discover more about their family history, learn where they're from, uh, find new relatives. And a year ago. Hold on, I gotta cut you off. Sure. This place is too pretty. Oh, look, I just gotta, look at this. Look at this. Let's, let's sit on these. This is like. Freaking, yeah. it's like freaking heaven here. Oh my God, this is so nice. What is my heritage? Talk to me. So we started in 2003 to help people learn more about their family history. Why? Because people have always wanted to know about their family history. It's always been something people have recorded. Start, Who's, what's the found, what, why the founders start? Founded started? by Gilad Jaffa, and he wanted to address a few problems. Um, he was interested in his own family history, couldn't find a platform he was happy to work with. Typical Israeli entrepreneur, developer, so he built his own one. And um, it's been taken by 90 million people around the world who are registered to users. 90 million registered users? Around the world, yeah. So, okay, how does this work? 
work. I, I come to myheritage.com, I sign up. What, what happens then? Put in a bit of information, your parents' names, your grandparents' names if you have right. them. Right. Now, technology finds you matches to historical records, to other people who share individuals in their family trees with you. Where do they find that information? Where do you find We're it? cross-referencing all of the 40 million family trees, all the 8 billion historical records, and we're- Those are massive numbers, Massive man. numbers, I mean. Holy cow, and you're VB marketing here. Yeah. It's all because you're doing it all. <laughs> I'm getting in trouble. Wait, so, what, seriously though, no joke, like why are you on TV every other day? How do you, how do you, how do you manage that? Um, we've got, great, company, we've got a great PR team. Oh, um, um, your PR? Yeah. Yeah, we work hard for the US and uh, major markets. No, we do it from here. Wow, it's incredible. You gotta teach me some time. Yeah. Okay, and so. Um, I think it's also about what we're doing. We're doing family, and meaningful. family is very meaningful. Right, and right. The presenters always connect with it. I hear that. It's funny, I just sat with a guy named Ruben uh, Maslow's. I don't know if you know Ariel Maslow's, who sold his company to Apple. Anyway, Ruben, I just literally finished a meeting with him, or you, that's why I was here. And he's like an Insta Instagram like celebrity, and he was telling me that I should take my family aspect of Instagram out and only talk about tech. You ready? And I, and I said exactly you said people like family. Yeah. I was like, yeah, but if you're a tech guy. Anyway, we were having that debate for like two hours straight. But okay, so 90 million registered users, billions of records, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and will uh, you make money? We'll see on the tour, but we have 40 languages and we have people speaking every language under the sun. Wow. How many, how many languages you said? We're available in 42. 42 languages? Yeah, we're a very global company. So what, what, so in just in terms of tech, not that I'm a big like, tell me about your tech, but what kind of, like, what's the tech here? What's the actual, like, I'm assuming you're using all kinds of crazy algorithms. Stuff. Sure. I mean, that's basically it. It's a very complex and seamless matching algorithms. And you guys acquired? We've acquired nine companies. What? Yeah. I did not know that. And, I was going to uh, say Jenny. I didn't know you acquired nine We acquired companies. Genie in 2012. Genie? Yeah. I, was, I never know how it's I always pronounced. say Genie. I think because it's like... I don't know if it was Genie, Genie, Genie. Yeah. I don't even yeah. know. Genie and I, right? Mm -hmm. okay. They're based in LA. Nine companies you acquired. How much money did you guys raise today? 49 million. Who are your lead investors? Um, Bessemer. Oh, okay. In Say no more. Excel. Was yeah. it was it Bessemer Israel or Bessemer? Adam Fisher works yeah. with Adam. So Ad Adam yeah. Fisher's probably, I sh I'm not going to say the best because I don't want to insult anyone else, but definitely one of the best investors. Probably the best returns in Israel. He's probably the best portfolio in Israel, I would say, I think. He's a super smart guy. Okay, so what, what, what does VP marketing at a company like this have to do? Don't I don't even know. It's exactly <laughs> working on so many different things. We do a lot of TV advertising, so uh, a lot of time I'm working uh, with the team on TV concept, producing TV ads, um, everything from working with the media relations side. Um, my team spans several countries and... Uh, How does the company make money? It's like a... Subscription or something? There is a subscription model. So you have the premium features that you need to be a subscriber to get. And uh, we also sell our DNA kit now. Oh, oh, that's right. You told me about that last time we met, I think. Yeah. Oh, so you're selling that stuff? I mean, so this just, is a, just a physical curious. product. You can... Not that I'm uh, an expert on this stuff by any means, but isn't there some sort of like um, legal? I feel like that could lead to really bad things. And do you have liability for like? It... No, I mean it's DNA. Complete, it's complete. It's, so it's DNA for family history for heritage testing. Not for like uh, you know um, hereditary diseases. And things like no. That. And uh, so what it means is you take the test and you find out your ethnic origins, what you're made up of. Mine was pretty boring, 98% Ashkenazi Jew, 2% <laughs> Middle East. I couldn't tell by the blonde hair at all. Yeah. You're 2% Middle East, how does, yeah. that, how does that work? Somewhere in history at some point. So what are we going to analyze me? Let's do it. How long does it take? take? We send the sample back to the lab, it takes a few weeks. And then, and by the way, just I'm just curious, I'm trying to understand, like, okay, so you, let's say you do an analysis of me and you figure out I'm 40% Ashkenazi Jew, 30%, whatever, I don't even know what I, I mean, I'd probably be 100% Ashkenazi Jew, but anyway. Then what? What do I do with that information? So it's, so it's great. You've jumped back in time. You've gone hundreds of years back to see where your roots are from. Right. Now you need to work out why. How? How are you going to find out where's that part of your family history from? Because the other aspect also of the DNA testing isn't just ethnic origins, but it's also your matches. You get matched to people around the world that share your ethnicity. Right. This week we, uh, we showed Piers Morgan on, on TV in England and we, we did his test and he had a match to somebody in Scotland and uh, Ireland and, and just now understands more because they've done their family history. We, we, we've been together uh, at several events but recently we were at a, an APEC uh, dinner where we spoke and you mentioned something about finding lost relatives. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. So one of the That's things amazing. the DNA test does, like I said, is bring you these matches and uh, a lot of people who are looking for their biological family, they're taking every step they can to find them right. and one of those steps is to do a DNA test and hope that somebody out there has also tested so my heritage doesn't just sell a DNA test it lets anybody upload if they've done a DNA test with any other company and upload it to my heritage interesting and it's a really international pool of people and we're matching and, so you're a genes platform well so I mean it's more like uh, helping people find uh, family for sure so give me some stories
stories that have happened to you. Oh, I apologize for the noise. There's like janitors. We're like in the kitchen. There's a lot of noise here, so I think it should be okay. The, the mic's like front, front facing. It should be. Should work. Yeah. I hope. We'll see. See how the mic uh, ends out. So yeah, I mean, like, imagine the most amazingly emotional stories you can have of people who have spent their whole lives looking for their family. People who have been looking for their family and they're finding these matches to. I mean, we have pe people all, all the time who are finding matches. Um, I myself got a match to um, a woman in LA who is adopted, never knew her biological family are. So I'm one of the first people within her biological family that she's now going to meet. Wow. And we're distant cousins, but through that connection, we're trying to establish who her That's biological crazy. family are. That's yeah. nuts. So and you've met parents and, and uh, kids? And parents and kids and siblings, and we have these reunions happening all the time. I'm freaking believable. Go to stories.myheritage.com. You're going to take a that. packet of skin. Stories.myheritage.com. Okay, yeah. it's just real quick about the company. How many people work here? We have just under 400. And you're all here in Oryu Huda? Nope. We Where have else? office Oryu Huda, Tel Aviv, uh, LA, Utah. Utah, Utah is the capital of the family history landscape. Interesting. Um, yeah. Very interesting. I didn't know there was such a thing. There is. Okay. Um, that's where the... Is the company... You got to talk about... I don't know if you got to talk about this, but now I'll just cut it out. But you got to tell me how much... Like, is the company profitable? How big is it? Or you don't want to rather not talk about it? So skip. <laughs> skip. Okay. Uh, so 400 people. And how, many, how big is the marketing team? We're around 30 people. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. All right. Well, I think, you know, a lot of people say that um, they're building tech to make the world a better place. You guys are actually doing it. Yeah. Like completely, absolutely making the world a better place. That's super cool. You've been here for how long? Six years almost. Six years. Give me your personal story a little bit. Where are you from? I'm originally from a place called Chigwell in Essex. I don't even think England. we introduced you. We did introduce you in the very beginning. Okay, yeah. Um, I then moved over to Hendon in London and then made Aliyah to Jerusalem. And five years ago, moved to Modiin. And Israel or London, which one's better? Israel or England? Yes, where's the suffering? Where's the question? There are, uh, some people have questions. I'm asking you, which one do you like better? I think that Israel is a land of opportunities. And and, uh, Love it. You're happy here? Very, very happy. Married, kids, everything. Living Four with boys. Eight. Four boys. They're happy here. How old are they? 11, 9, 5, and 11 months. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. Congrats, Emily had a baby. <laughs> very cool. So they're happy. You're happy. Wife's happy. Wife's, wife's also English? Yes. So, and she's happy here? Mm hmm. It's pretty awesome. You guys, you live in the life. Yeah. It's an amazing company, man. This place is beautiful. Let's go take a tour. Five years ago, we moved from a, a villa in the Moshav. Yeah. Moshav Benet Tarot is where wow, I found it. Look at this freaking view, my god. Ben Gurion. Ben Gurion. This is Ben Gurion right here. Wow, amazing. We're in a villa in Bnei Atarot. That's where the company started. Right. And we really wanted to kind of keep that kind of everybody used to sit outside and eat lunch together in the grass. Yeah. And so we wanted to kind of keep that. Why does it smell like barbecue here? I don't know, it always smells like barbecue. <laughs> Often it's because we're barbecuing. Is that so. your grill? Yeah. Oh man. Are you guys hiring? I want to come here. <laughs> What are you looking for? Tell, tell the vlog, what are you looking for? Careers.myheritage.com, find something there. Beautiful, you guys are hiring a lot of a lot of positions? Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Company's growing fast, right? Yeah. Incredible, you having a good time? Great time. That's the important thing. Exactly. Awesome, well let's not wait another like five years till we catch up, let's have steak sometime, all right? Thanks for the interview, dude. No problem. These are some of the photos that our users have uploaded from their family histories. Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. These are real things. Yeah. Damn. It's incredible. This is the wrong. So, one manages an incredibly large budget for TV advertising. T Wait, so you're doing all the TV stuff? So you're a rock star. You do a good job. What's your name? Iran. Iran. Hi, I'm Hilal. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Only 500 million people are going to see this. Uh, I'm just kidding. This is our research team. They're also in my team researchers who are doing like historical research, looking for stories and helping reunite families. Last week we presented uh, President Rivlin. This is Niktai. President Rivlin's family tree to him and wow. his, I mean, his oh, I saw that you were with him. Stories. Look, yeah. You're taking selfies with the whole world, man. You're putting me to shame. <laughs> um, Elizabeth over here, they're working on a case now. Hi, guys. What's up? Hi. Just Elizabeth. CNN, don't worry. Elizabeth has researched some of the most, like, leading, like, talk show hosts and journalists in the world, and we've presented on Fox News the research that she's done. Super cool. And they're led by Roy, who's running around on the phone. Super duper cool. What's up? These are Hi. up about, this is Mia. She hey. does a lot of like, conferences and tons of other things. And so he, I can't even describe. <laughs> Sagi, what do you do? Marketing project manager. Marketing project manager? Yes. Yeah. Nice project, nice project. Nice Cool. Yeah. Nice to meet you. This is one of the uh, custom support teams. This is so beautiful. I love the design. They just tons of languages. I don't know how many languages are spoken here. They're all just helping customers around the world. How many people are in this office? Um, a few hundred. I can't actually remember. This thing is a map 
showing discoveries being made on my heritage in real time in different countries. All the dots of the different countries around the world. For example, this lady in Germany just added, just found 12 relatives on my heritage. This is an amazing office. We just office. broke down this wall a couple of years ago and made a whole nother wing. See the gym? Dude, gym? Yeah. The gym here? You wouldn't know it to look at me, but yeah, oh we did. Oh my god, bro, you, this is, you, got, you got it all going on here. This is such a cool office though, like just the design is so awesome. Yeah, they really, they wanted it to kind of be homely. I mean, it's difficult because it's... Love the wood. This is gym. No. Love this, love this. Thank you for the interview and for the tour, I appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure, anytime. We are really close to the airport here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love companies that are under the radar building global enterprises. My Heritage, massive company, raised tremendous amount of capital, generating all that revenue, and you've probably never even heard of them. Amazing. So those were some great meetings. It was a good day and a good way to end the week, but I just wanted to maybe rant a little bit, share some thoughts on a certain topic that I've been thinking about a lot lately. So I got a mass email this morning, something we all get a hundred times a day, but one word specifically struck me that I, I just thought I had to address. It literally was addressed. The email started, hello everyone, not hi Hillel, hello everyone. Now, if it had been addressed hi Hillel, that doesn't mean I wouldn't have known it was a mass email. I mean, mass emails are mass emails. We've got to do it sometimes. Not a fan, but it has to be done sometimes. But at least start it with the person's name, right? Use MailChimp. Use a service that you can actually place the person's name. Starting an email, hello everyone, or a mass WhatsApp email, hey everyone. Again, this brings me back to a topic I've talked about so many times. When communicating, don't think of your own needs. Think of the needs of the person receiving your message, whether that's a tweet. So don't stick 10,000 hashtags in your tweet in order to get more followers. Think of the person seeing that tweet, meaning the people that already followed you. If it's a Facebook message, if it's a LinkedIn message, don't add someone on LinkedIn and the second they accept, send them a sales pitch. Think of that person. Communicate with that person. Be human. Don't think of your own needs. Think of the person's needs that's going to be receiving that message. Put yourself in their shoes and think, would I respond to such a message if I was on the receiving end? And, you know, I just feel like, how do people not know this by now? It, it drives me a little bit crazy. And this mass email that I got this morning, like, hey, everyone, like that does not give me incentive to want to reply, which leads me to another point. If you're sending an email to five people in, let's say, a VC firm or three people in a marketing agency or whatever, two people in a company, if all these people get this message, every person's going to think the next guy is going to reply. The next guy is going to deal with whatever you're asking. Be very, very clear with your ask. Speak to a specific person. Again, it, it all comes back to thinking about the people receiving the message, receiving the email, receiving the tweet, receiving whatever. But this this mass email that I got this morning, like, it just I can't understand why a person would start an email, hey, everyone. That gives a message to everyone and an incentive to no one to reply. So even if you have to send a mass email or a mass message, try to make it as personal as you possibly can. There are programs, there are platforms for this, use them. But I, I don't think there's, I can't think of a, any, any scenario ever, period, across the board, that justifies starting any form of communication with, hey everyone, hey friends, hey, just talk to a person or say, hey, what's up, if you can't talk, use the person's name. But don't start a message with, hey everyone. And that's all I have to say about that. I want to call it a day, call it a week. I think it was a pretty phenomenal week, if I do say so myself. I hope you got to meet some amazing people. And um, yeah, see you next week. Later.